Hi everyone, I'm here today with six book recommendations and the chance to win all six of those books as well. Those are linked to a prize that I've been judging recently, but before I talk about those, I wanted to quickly mention this because it's also prize related. The Independent Bookshop Week Book Awards shortlist were announced today, and I was really thrilled that Franklin's Flying Bookshop has been shortlisted in the picture book category. As you know, this is my book baby, illustrated by Katie Harnett, and I'm really, really happy that it's on that shortlist because, well for many different reasons, but the main one being that the books that are nominated are nominated by booksellers, so it really does mean a lot. Independent Bookshop Week in the UK is between the 15th and the 22nd of June, so in that week I'll be travelling around the UK and doing events. Some of those events are with Katie. I'll leave details in the description box down below, and if you haven't already checked out Franklin's Fine Bookshop and would like to, that would be really, really lovely. It's all about a book-loving dragon called Franklin, who just wants to share his love of reading with the world. So getting on to the other books, the ones that you could win. For the past three years I've been judging the Somerset Mom Award which has been fun and difficult and illuminating and interesting. It's particularly interesting because it's open to fiction, non-fiction, poetry, so you're judging books that are very different to each other against each other, though I suppose really you're judging them against the criteria that they've set themselves and deciding whether or not they have achieved what they set out to achieve. This year we have shortlisted six titles, there's a prize fund of £16,000 and the winners will share that money between themselves and they have to use that money to travel somewhere which will hopefully inspire their next book. So let me show you these books and at the end I'll tell you how you could win them. All of the books that I mentioned will also be linked in the description box down below. Let's go through them in alphabetical order. The first book on our shortlist is a poetry collection and that is The Perseverance by Raymond Antrobus. This looks at deafness, it looks at identity, it looks at race, it looks at past, both individual past and collective pasts as well. It has a mixture of sign language in here as well as the written words of the poems themselves. There is a poem in here that's written in response to Denez Smith's Dear White People called Dear Hearing World. There is an erasure, a full erasure poem of a Ted Hughes poem and then a response poem to that. Um, this collection deals with mishearings, with miscommunication, misunderstandings, both deliberate and otherwise, and how those things are all linked together too. So in one poem, Raymond remembers his father constantly going into a pub called The Perseverance and him saying, I'm constantly hearing, I'm just popping in for a minute. And that linking back to his first poem where he says that he remembers popping in his ears when he was younger. How those are both very different things with different meanings, but also they are inextricably linked in his mind and in his memories. It is a beautiful collection. The next book is a non-fiction book, it's called The Stopping Places, A Journey Through Gypsy Britain by Damien Labasse. Now Damien is a traveller, his family are all travellers, and he wanted to delve into the history of that. He wanted to travel around the UK and find all the stopping places that his family used to stop in historically and he decided to set off on his own. It's a very personal book because he's talking about things that are part of his immediate history but which he doesn't feel such an affinity with, or at least he straddles that line. There are travellers that he knows who have settled down and are living in houses now, and then there are travellers that he knows who are still living, in inverted commas, the old life, and he finds himself somewhere in the middle, almost judged by both sides, or at least he feels judged by both sides in different scenarios. Because this is tied to a personal narrative and then branches out into research areas that the author was particularly interested in, it's not a comprehensive history, but that doesn't matter. I thoroughly enjoyed it, and because I also love etymology, I was particularly interested in his discussion of traveller words that you might not know were traveller words and their origins. So for instance, as a Geordie lass, I I'm used gadgy and raggy, and also there are the words chav and chav, all of those those are traveller words and I did not know that, so lots to learn about in here. Then the next on our shortlist is Phoebe Powers' Shrines of Upper Austria, so another poetry collection. This is one that I've spoken about on the channel a couple of times and I'm still so impressed with how diverse and outward looking this is for a debut poetry collection. It travels, imagined travels throughout Europe and European history, it discusses climate change and language, 
It is rich and intricate. It plays around with form and voice too. I'll leave a link down below to a video where I discuss this collection in more detail. Next on our list is this big book here, which is The Crossway by Guy Stagg. The reason it's so big is because he has a lot of things to say because this documents his journey walking from Canterbury to Jerusalem. That's a fair old way. He's not a religious person, but he decided to set off on this pilgrimage and to stay with nuns and with monks and in sanctuaries along the way. He climbed over the Alps in the middle of winter. I just, there are parts of this book that are treacherous and you know that it's gonna be okay because ultimately he lives to write this book, but still, I felt like I was living it with him and I was really on the edge of my seat. He survives a terrorist attack in Lebanon, he sees the emergence of a new pope at Easter in Rome when he happens to be there. He initially just decides to walk to Rome but then decides he's gonna go all the way to Jerusalem. And this book is, well, it, it, it's pretty epic. You know me, I love learning about strange weird facts that I can then regurgitate at people. This book is amazing for that, so this is the fifth book on our list, it is The Golden Thread, How Fabric Changed History by Cassia Sinclair. I recommended her first book on this channel, A Wild Book, A, a Wild Book, A Wild Back, which was The Secret Lives of Colour, which looked at mythology and the history of different colours and how they've been used. This looks at the history of fabric, it looks at the wrappings around Tutankhamun, it looks at Columbus, it looks at the Silk Road, it looks at trade, how fabrics are made, Things perhaps you have never even considered before, but those things that you have never considered before, you should have considered, I should have considered, because they're absolutely fascinating. The detail in this, it's amazing, it's so intricate, it's definitely one of those books just to have somewhere that you can pick up and just read little snippets of every now and then and just fill your brain with wonderful, wonderful stuff. The sixth book on our shortlist is one that defies being put in a genre box and that is Mrs. Gaskell and Me by Nell Stevens. This is her second book and it is part memoir, part research, part discussion of women writers. It looks at unrequited love and friendship. So Nell is talking about embarking on her PhD and the relationship that she's having or not having with her partner, Max. And at the same time, she's looking at the life of Mrs. Gaskell and the relationship that she may or may not have had with a man that she met in Rome. It is astute. It has so many wonderful observations in it. It is so readable and compelling. And if you enjoyed Normal People by Sally Rooney, this is a book that you need to pick up. It gave me very, very similar vibes um, for reasons I can't particularly explain. I just think that if you loved one, you will definitely love the other. So those are the six books on our shortlist. Obviously, I heartily recommend all of them. We'll be picking our winners and announcing them on Monday the 17th of June. I'm gonna try and vlog that and that whole week. But in the meantime, would you like to win all of these six shortlisted books because the Society of Authors who run the prize have very kindly offered up a bundle for me to give away. If you would like to win all of these titles, simply be subscribed to this channel and leave a comment down below saying you would like to enter and let me know which books in the shortlist you're particularly keen to get to. It's open until the 1st of June, it's open internationally and I'll pick a winner after the 1st of June using a random number generator and that winner will win all six books. So I think that's everything that I had to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having a great week and I will speak to you all very soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye.